Hey, good morning, my friends. How are you today? Awesome. Hey, today's May 1st. That means it's May Day, baby. That's right. And don't forget, um, if you go up to school today between 1130 and two o'clock, you can get your little care package or a little May Day basket, which is going to be kind of fun. Don't forget, you can wear a mask, you can wear gloves. So, um, and everyone there who's passing things out will be taking precautions as well, okay? I hope everyone goes to school and picks up their little care package today. Join me in our song, okay? Hello and how are you? Hello and how are you? Hello and how are you? How are you today? I am fine and I hope you are too. I am fine and I hope you are too. I am fine and I hope you are too. I am fine today. Smile at me and wave hello. Smile at me and wave hello. Smile at me and wave hello. Wave hello today. Hola y como estas? Hola y como estas? Hola y como estas? Como estas hoy día? Yo estoy bien y como estas tú? Yo estoy bien y como estas tú? Yo estoy bien y como estas tú? Como estas hoy día? Nice job. Okay, let's get to our weather, okay? Let's find out how the day is lo gonna look today. I think it's gonna be pretty nice, yep. Our weather bear tells us that it could be as cool as 63, but as warm as 76. So that looks nice today. He says it might be a little windy. So you might need a light jacket or a long sleeve shirt. Okay, so I hope everybody is able to get outside today. Let's count our, let's get our calendar done, okay? Ready? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Today is Friday. Tomorrow is Saturday. Yesterday was Thursday. Domingo, lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves, viernes, sábado. Domingo, lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves, viernes, sábado. Hoy es viernes, hoy es viernes. Today is Friday, viernes. Hey! And look, our calendar. It doesn't have any numbers on it. Yeah, it's not April anymore. No, we made it to May. May 1st. It's May Day, baby. Yeah. So up here it says May. And can we say the months of the year with me? January, February, March, and April. May and June, July and August. September, October, November, December. These are the months of the year. Yeah, how many are there? 12, so 10 and two more. There's 12 months. May, how many months is it, do we have to count to get to May? Let's see, January, February, March, April, May. It's the fifth month. May is the fifth month. So today is, if we were going to write it in numbers, we would write the number five, and then we would make a slash or a dash, and we would write the number one, because it's the first of May, and then we would write 20, because it's 2020. That's how we would write the uh, month and the day and the year in numbers if we were going to write it just with numbers. But if we write a sentence, we can write today is 
Friday. Well, almost wrote April. Not April anymore, right? May. That's easier to spell. M-A-Y. May. May 1st, 2020. Period. There's our sentence. There's two ways to write the month, isn't there? And the day. Um, oh, I forgot to put up partly cloudy today. And it might be a little windy. There we go. Are you ready to do our flag? Can you stand up with me? All right, stand up. Find a spot to stand. All right, take that right hand, put it over your heart, and say, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we're going to grab our earth flag here. There it is. Ready? Say, I pledge allegiance to the earth and all the life that it supports. One planet in our care, irreplaceable, with sustenance and respect for all. All right. And I... We have a May poem, but it is at school. I will try to go and grab that today. But in, I remember the May poem in my head. It goes like this. In May, I truly think it best to be a robin, lightly dressed, concocting soup inside my nest. Mix it once, mix it twice, mix that chicken soup with rice. <laughs> Concocting is another word for making. So he's making soup in his nest. The little robin is making soup in his nest in that poem. Let's do our spring poem. I love all the seasons, but springtime is the best. Let's put on our raincoats. Now we are all dressed. In the rain, we love to play. And this is what we hear. Pitter patter, pitter patter. That's the season's cheer. Nice. All right, I have two new poems for May because not this weekend, not this Saturday, not tomorrow, but the next weekend, guess who we're gonna be celebrating? That's right, your mom. Mother's Day is coming up. Just in case you didn't know, daddies. <laughs> Mother's Day is next weekend. You only have a few more days. So next week, we're going to do lots of activities about mom and so you can be ready for Mother's Day and to be able to give her a special day. Okay, it's on Sunday. So here's a poem that maybe you can um, say to her on Mother's Day so we can practice this whole week and then you'll be ready to tell it to her on Mother's Day. It's called My Mommy Cuddles Me. That's fun to do, isn't it? To cuddle your mama. Yeah, it goes like this. My mommy cuddles me, kisses me, hugs me, and misses me. Pampers me, praises me, always amazes me. Washes my clothes for me, tickles my toes for me, giggles and talks with me, and also goes on walks with me. Says sweet dreams to me, sings sweet songs to me. I'm glad she belongs to me. Isn't that a sweet poem? It has some bigger words in it that we might need to understand. The word pampers, pampers is another word for making sure you have everything you need, taking care of you, giving you the very best. And that's what we're gonna give our mom on Mother's Day. We're gonna pamper her, give her the very best we can on that day praises me. A praise is kind of another word for giving you, um, telling you all the good things that you've done and telling you what a great job that you've done. When someone has praised you, they're telling you, oh, that is wonderful. How beautiful that is. What a wonderful work you did. So we like to praise you a lot when you're doing your schoolwork 
but we're going to praise our moms on Mother's Day because she does a lot of praising for us, doesn't she? Yeah. And amazing means something wonderful and um, uh, outstanding and fantastic. She always amazes us, doesn't she? Think about all the things your mommy does. Wow, that's a lot. She amazes me. <laughs> yeah. All right, we have another poem here. But if you'll notice, I don't know if you can see it, but this one is not in English. It's in Spanish. Isn't that cool? Yeah. This one's called mamita. And mamita is the word for mother in Spanish. So mamita. And it goes like this. Mamita, mamita, de mi corazón. Te doy esta flor con todo mi amor. Isn't that nice? Mamita means mother. De mi corazón means of my heart. So your mother, that's close to your heart. And te doy esta flor means here's a flower. Yeah, here's a flower. And con todo mi amor, with all my love. So, mamita, 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 de mi corazón, te doy esta flor con todo mi amor. Isn't that sweet? So nice. So maybe you could say both of those poems for your mom on Mother's Day, okay? Um, today, we are going to be reading the book, um, the octopus book. I don't know if I have it in here. Well... It's, all, it's called Meet the Octopus, but I thought I would read a little bit from this book. This is called Ocean Life, and it has a couple pages on octopuses. So I thought I would read that real quick. Can you see that? There we go. So we're gonna start here. Octopuses have eight tentacles or arms. They are covered in suckers. They use these to catch fish and crustaceans to eat. There are over a hundred different species or types of octopus. The largest is the giant Pacific octopus. It is 16 feet long. That's really long. There are two different kinds of blue ringed octopus. Each have a venomous bite. That means they have kind of like a poison or a venom inside them. And it could make um, whatever it bites sick or maybe even die. So a blue ringed octopus, this is the one over here. It doesn't really look blue right now, does it? It looks more brownish red, but that's for a reason. It says the blue ringed octopus is found in shallow pools off the coast of Australia. Hey, that's where the coral reef is. When resting, it is pale brown or even yellow. It only shows its blue color when it feels threatened or scared. So that's why that octopus is not blue right now. It does, it's just resting. It doesn't feel scared by anything. In order to escape from predators, octopuses squirt black, inky liquid into the water. So the predator cannot see it and it qu can quickly escape. Pretty awesome, huh? There are some octopuses that are just a few inches long, tiny little things. And there are some octopuses that can blend in with their surroundings. They can change their color and they can make themselves look like other animals. Today you'll see a video about a very special octopus called the Mimic Octopus. And it can change its shape to look like other animals so that another animal swimming by it doesn't think it's an octopus. It'll think it's a different animal so it won't try to eat it. How smart is that? Very smart. Octopuses can even open jars that they know their food is inside. Isn't that amazing? So cool. What an animal. 
So you might want to do some research on an octopus for our next Zoom meeting. For our next Zoom meeting, what I want you to do, kind of like what we did yesterday, I want you to bring a picture or a sculpture or a 3D model. Some of us had 3D models that were really cool called dioramas. You can do one of those and I want you to research this time and find us some facts about your animal that you've studied. It can be a vertebrate or an invertebrate, doesn't matter something that you found interesting in the coral reef when we've been studying the coral reef and reading so many books and so many watching so many videos about the coral reef. I want you to really find out some interesting things that we might not know. I learned a lot yesterday. I learned things I didn't know about the cuttlefish, about all sorts of animals. I had no idea. So I want to learn a lot more from you, okay? This is your chance to teach Mrs. Boyd and all your friends, okay? Um, for works today, we are gonna take a field trip to learn about more about octopuses and sea stars. And you can uh, do some invertebrate research. You could use that invertebrate research for your show and share on our Zoom meeting next week, or you could do more, you could do another one, okay? But today is an invertebrate research. You'll also do something called a STEM activity, and STEM stands for Science, Engineering, Technology, and Math, STEM. And today you get to be engineers, and you get to design a parachute, right? Haven't you always wanted to go on a parachute? Yeah. I made a parachute. I did. Now, in the activity on the website, it says to use a little deer, that's just what they used. You don't have to use a deer. You can look around your house and find something that you can drop from your parachute, okay? Or attach to your parachute to be able to drop. I did not have a plastic deer, so I used this little guy. It's a pen, but it looks like a frog. So I thought, well, that looks kind of cool. I thought, well, that would be good because that's kind of like how a person hangs from a parachute, right? And I use this plastic bag. I modified my plastic bag a little bit. I changed its shape by taping the sides. I gave it a little bit more stability. I used some, uh, uh, I guess it's a skewer on the top because I thought I wanted it to be open a little bit more. So when he drops down and I attached my parachute to my frog with tape. And then you can test your parachute by maybe taking it up to a high place. Maybe you have a deck that you could drop it from or just standing on a stool and drop it down. So I'm gonna drop mine, we'll see what happens. And he, yep, he dropped down and he landed. What's fun is you can invite your family members to also make parachutes and then see whose parachute works the best. Dropping it from the same height using the same animal or whatever you find to attach to your parachute, you might want to get a stopwatch or use your uh, mom or dad's phone to figure out how long it takes your parachute to get down to the ground. It's not the person whose parachute drops the fastest that has the best parachute. Mm -mm. It's the person who has the parachute that gets the animal down as safely and as slowly as possible. Which parachute can slow the animal's drop to a safe speed? So that's the tricky part, okay? I will be excited to see what you come up with today. So try out some different parachute designs. You can try different ones and see which one works the best or invite your family to design them and see which parachute will get your animal down to the ground the safest, okay? So enjoy your day today, hopefully get outside. Show and share today is Lila and Lyrica, the L's, and then tomorrow, not tomorrow, Monday, sorry, <laughs> Monday will be Samantha and Annie. So Samantha and Annie, you have the weekend 
to get your show and share ready, okay? Can't wait to see your different parachute designs, my friends. Have a great day learning all about invertebrates, and we will see you on Monday. Have an awesome weekend, my friends. Have a lovely day. Bye.